Into the Stars. This game has actually received very mixed reviews from the gaming community and I just wanted to give you my opinion about what I thought about it and also do a, a kind of a review slash playthrough um, of this game in this particular video. Welcome to What The Math, today we're taking a look at Into the Stars. <laughs> And let's begin with the new game and also the menu and a bit of a storyline. So what's the story here? The story is that the humans are being attacked by a hostile race called the Scorn. The Scorn are trying to eliminate the humanity and they started attacking Earth. And so the humans decided to create these arcs that you see in the background and launch them to um, the only planet they know where they can survive called Titus Nova. Unfortunately, 12 of these arcs have already been destroyed. And if you ever watch the introduction, it will show you that the 12th arc sends a message to the arc number 13 saying, you're the last, you have to survive. So you're controlling this last arc. Uh, one thing I'm going to tell you right off the bat, the game is challenging. You need to really be careful with the difficulty you select. Just for the sakes of this review, I'm going to choose Explorer um, because I wanted to show you how this game works. And uh, basically, the difficulty determines your end score if you finish the game. You can also customize your spaceship uh, quite dramatically, uh, choose different modules that will support uh, certain uh, types of uh, spaceship or sp certain types of gameplay. Like, for example, if you're more combat oriented, you may, may want to choose this or you can customize this directly and um, choose what you want, which is what I'm going to do here. We're going to actually select all of our crew uh, manually. And so th this is the part of the game where you get to customize your ship. So like I said before, if you want it to be more combat oriented, you would choose um, combat modules. If you want it to be uh, more in, uh, survivable, you want to you may want to choose some uh, extreme life supports or um, other modules that will allow you to survive in space on longer holes and basically move a lot faster and a lot more efficiently. Now I've decided to go with a more combat oriented ship and we're also going to select uh, six of our crew and uh, the best way to select them is to essentially choose um, six of them based on their skill, the highest possible skill. So I'm just going to enlist them just very simply using the highest engineering, highest command, highest pilot, highest medic and so on because we want to have a very balanced crew for this particular um, playthrough. And so uh, when you begin the game, it shows you the map. So all of these are little areas you'll go through. And in that sense, this game is very similar to a game called FTL, Fast and the Light. Uh, basically, you're flying through these um, pre-generated areas and you're trying to reach Titus Nova. It's not as easy as it sounds and you will discover or encounter many different uh, things on the way. And um, one thing I'm going to say right away before I start this game is that this is not a true space simulator. And so let's actually start moving and um, as I'm moving, I'm actually going to show you how this game works. So this is more of a roguelike similar to FTL that has 3D controls and that has uh, all of these random events that will actually happen to you or occur to you as soon as you approach something. So uh, first thing you'll see is that the, there's a planet there and you'll probably want to approach it um, and see what you can do on that particular planet. And I'm actually going to see if I can maybe get something in this area as well. And as you fly through the solar system, you'll essentially encounter various other sh uh, spaceships. You'll also encounter the Scorn. You'll have to fight them off. Uh, and uh, the battles in this game work uh, very similar to old school uh, Japanese RPG games. Basically, it's turn-based um, with the Scorn sort of just appearing in front of you. I'll, I'll, I'll show you all of this as I'm playing through this. We're just going to go to this planet first. Now, there's also actually um, a really beautiful graphics in this game. So I'm going to try to... And there we go. So yeah, there's a you know beautiful sun in the background. There's also all kinds of objects around you, and you'll actually even see um, spacecraft flying around you that you can approach and interact with. And some of these spacecraft are actually not hostile. Uh, so it's telling me to interact by pressing F. And on every planet, you you have three different things you can do. You can either shuttle a team, uh, which essentially uh, allows you to to do certain randomly generated missions, like for example. You can save a person. If you're missing one of the crew, if one of your crew di dies, you can actually save uh, another person from, for, for example, a scorn prison or something of that nature. You can also do mining here. And this is actually a mini game that I'm going to show you right now, where you, you kind of have a drill that moves through this uh, a kind of a grid and you collect minerals to, to improve um, your mineral content. Or you can send a resource probe, which will do this for you automatically. But at the same time, it will not usually be as effective. Um, so let's start with this. Let's start with the minigame. 
and for every mission you usually have to choose uh, your crew as well and so if a mission fails usually you lose that crew member but for the drill it's not um, it's actually almost impossible to lose your crew members now for the pilot we're obviously going to pick this guy because he has the highest pilot ability and for the mining rig We'll take her because she has high engineering. So, all right, we're ready and let's do this. Uh, it says good conditions, chance of success is 89%, and we have to spend 50 nitrogen to launch this probe. Uh, all right, so you get to see a short cutscene, and basically, you'll jump into this little mini game where you'll be collecting things. All right, so here we go. So, you control this very easily by moving left and right, and essentially, you're just trying to avoid. Um, these things <laughs> these things that i just bumped into um if the drill is destroyed the game is over and you return to your ship with whatever you've collected and i've collected a little bit not enough unfortunately for me to be proud of you can usually collect everything um but that, that wasn't really a lot so the game is kind of easy but uh, not particularly fun this mini game is actually a little bit boring to be honest now we're also going to try to deploy the shadow team here and launched a shuttle team mission and the chance of success here is 91% so let's see where this leads us what kind of um, event this will be and what we'll get out of it and so there are three different possibilities for us there is a religious natives a reward is a module there's a lockbox that rewards with an item or there's a subterranean shelter that also rewards us with a module let's go with the religious natives uh, unfortunately you don't really get to do anything other than read and choose um, one of the options here. So the natives here uh, lay uh, calmly on the floor, repeating strange guttural sounds while facing a strange rock formation. The rock doesn't seem that special. What are your orders, Captain? So we can join them and mimic their actions. We can wait until they're finished and attempt to communicate, or we can bless the rock and proclaim yourself God. <laughs> uh, that sounds so tempting. Persuade them tr to trade. But no, we're gonna be nice to them. Let's actually be nice and uh, let's just join them. And we've succeeded. This guy uh, gained a little bit of points. He became more commandery. This guy became more medic -y. And uh, uh, this mission has been completed. And we actually got a new mining rig from this. And that's a little bit uh, more efficient and only uses hydrogen. So we're actually going to replace this um, uh, with our old rig. And uh, the last here is the probe. But it's uh, it's basically the same as this. It's just uh, it's automatic. It's not as fun. Anyway, let's actually return back to space. And um, one of the things in this game is that you can actually control your ship from uh, this particular perspective as well. You can actually basically fly through space just as, as if you were a commander of like a Star Trek ship or something. Um, but unfortunately, in this particular view, your window is really only this big. And you don't really see anything. It's kind of hard to see things. Uh, but sometimes you'll have to return to this um, view just for the sakes of the map and also to, uh, to go through different events. So like, for example, right here... There's actually an event here right now. And the event is this. A peeping Tom is terrorizing the civilian quarters, affecting public happiness. Track him down and detain him. Uh, so that's a mission that's uh, going to be completed by Ruth Adams. And <laughs> it's a funny mission. But uh, yeah, so you'll have these different reports once in a while that will uh, reward you or possibly penalize you for, uh, for do doing something. Now we're going to be moving toward the planet here, and as you can see, I'm actually controlling the ship as I'm doing this. Uh, but uh, there's several other things here. So there's a captain's chair, there's the map, which shows you where we are located and where we're going. So we're going this way, obviously. Uh, and there's also um, resources. This is uh, this shows you what you have, what you possibly want to focus on if you're going to a planet, and what you may need. There's also engineering, which essentially uh, is where you get to fix your ship and where you get to um, change certain modules and if you get into battle and one of the modules gets destroyed, you get to repair it here as well. There's the crew part, which actually shows you uh, different events and there's actually another event here. And lastly, there's something called Civilian City and this is a kind of a mini building game uh, where you can actually construct um, more of the city for your people living on this arc. And this will either increase order or happiness or health of your crew or will actually grow your population because people here will actually die with time and you don't want to lose them because this will decrease your score. Uh, unfortunately, this is sort of really, really simplified. So, like, for example, I can actually build... Uh, let's build this to give them more health. Oh boy, heavy radiation, that's not good. And, and unfortunately, these are really expensive, so I'm not going to be able to build them yet. Uh, but essentially, this is how this works. 
And we actually found one of the arcs here. This is a wreckage of Arc 8, and it's, it has uh, contains a captain's log as well. This is my final report. Our hull is critical. So we're going to send a shuttle crew just to find out what happened to them. And so let's find out what happened to the arc number eight. This will hopefully resolve that uh, mystery for us. The shuttle has been successful. Uh, something is occurring about in the air ducts, Captain, but we've detected no human life aboard. Should we investigate? So there's aliens on this uh, ship, and let's actually take a look in the ducts. Uh, oh, re reverse the airflow and flush the ducts. We flushed the ventilation and the sounds have stopped. Either the noise was just the metal expansion or we drove whatever was inside out of the ducts. And we found a new module while exploring Arc 8, and we get to actually have Citadel Alien technology that gives us a lot more damage absorption. So this actually has upgraded our ship a little bit, and we're, we're now a little bit more powerful. Alright, so let's get back into this outside view here and fly out of here, and we're going to go toward uh, one of the enemy ships, so I get, I get to also show you how the combat works so essentially for the most part this is what you'll be doing in this game you've basically just uh, have seen about 90 percent of this game the other 10 percent is going to be combat and you usually want to try to avoid it oh no melancholy spreading that's not good so we have melancholy we need to actually try to get a medic here it's going to be this person here that is going to try to resolve this melancholical issue that we're having. Uh, so once a, once in a while you have these events that you need to try to resolve by basically clicking on one of the members of your crew to resolve them. Uh, now, as I mentioned before, you can actually lose your, um, your crew. Your crew is not immortal. They will die. Um, and you have to be really careful with them because once you lose one of your crew, that's it. You're, the game is going to be very difficult. Um, you're going to be missing a huge part of uh, your arsenal. And as I'm actually doing these missions and launching these probes and all that, um, I'm actually using up some of my resources. But the thing is, as you run out of these resources, it, it also means that you'll at some point have to reach one of these planets and do that mini game where you're basically flying through um, the planet with your mining probe, which is, I personally don't really enjoy. This is probably one of the few things I don't enjoy in this game. Um, ooh, what's this? Labor dispute. But what I do enjoy is these uh, randomly generated um, uh, crazy side missions that you have to resolve uh, once in a while. Uh, so, as I mentioned before, there's a quite a mixed opinion about this game. So some people enjoy it, some people don't. I personally am liking everything about this, except for, of course, that minigame I mentioned. Now, the, the actual battle minigame I'm going to show you as soon as I actually restart this game in a more difficult mode, just to show you what it actually looks like, because I don't think I'll be able to find... I, don't, I won't find anyone here. There's no one. There's no enemies. On, on easy mode, it's actually you're just kind of exploring, I think. You might see some enemies once in a while, but not a lot. Uh, but yeah, for me, this is actually kind of fun. I really enjoyed FTL, and this is sort of a more advanced version of FTL. It's not exactly um, as complicated. It's not exactly as randomly generated. And... Um, but nevertheless, it, it does include a totally three-dimensional world. Um, there's a lot of beautiful environments here, a lot of really, really beautiful, beautiful planets and beautiful asteroids to explore. And uh, at least for the first playthrough, you'll actually be totally wowed and totally blown away by this game, I think. Um, maybe second or third playthrough, playthrough when you already know where everything is located, it might not be as difficult. Uh, but the first time you're playing this, you'll actually kind of, I think you'll kind of enjoy this. All right, so let's actually get into battle. And while we're waiting for the Scorn to get here and to engage us in battle, let's actually look at the ship from the outside as well. You actually do see that city that you're creating um, here. It's actually in, in, in this area. So you, you get to see whatever you build is going to appear there. You even get to see the area where the captain sits. Um, it's somewhere over there. Unfortunately, there's no people showing up though. Uh, but uh, it's basically that that's the area that you uh, see when you press C button. So that's, that's the window that you see. Uh, so, all in all, the game is actually very detailed. Uh, I personally think it's very beautiful. And um, the gameplay is definitely not for everyone. And I think for $20, some people may actually think that this is a little bit too simple. Uh, but it's really all about the challenge. And uh, it's all about trying to, you know, discover everything there is to discover in this game. I mean, um, in terms of the story, it's actually pretty good. And in terms of the actual amount of content here, it's actually pretty good as well. But because it's not randomly generated like FTL and because it's not really... Like, it doesn't change as much once you finish it the first few times. You'll kind of know exactly what to do already. I think for that reason, I think some people f think that it's a little bit too simplified. Uh, but nevertheless, it's it's a very original title. It's actually kind of enjoyable. 
and it's definitely worth checking out as well. So I think the scorn are somewhere. I'm just gonna slow down. I'm gonna stop my ship and wait for them to get to me. And there we go. We finally get attacked by the scorn. The Scorn are a hive mind race. No one knows where they came from. Their home seems to be aboard a massive ship that is always on the move. They move from the star system to star system, destroying and wiping out the native species of the region. Their only goal is eradication. You think you can escape us easily. There is no hope for your kind. We will eradicate you like the others. So this is how the battles will usually work in this game. It's all going to be kind of uh, random. Uh, they will appear out of nowhere and usually based on the um, threat level in the sector. I have actually waited a little bit around the planet to make this orange and make this red for them to appear. And um, you can basically choose who's going to do what. And this is why the mixed command um, or mi mixed crew is so important. Uh, so let's actually assign um, each of these members here. And we're basically assigning them based on their skill, of course. And as soon as you confirm this, uh, the battle starts. And the, the way it works is essentially it's it's all turn-based. So, uh, and so the way this works is kind of simple, but at the same time uh, kind of fun. Basically, it's all based on colors. Now, they will attack me with their weapons and they'll project three different colors. The red, um, yellow, or blue. And I can try to deflect their attacks using this deflector shield uh, by uh, matching the color. Now, for me to actually strike them, I have to do the same, but I have to try to offset my color so they actually hit them. So if they have a red shield, I have to use yellow or blue, and if they have yellow shield, I have to use red or blue, and so on. So let's actually try to battle them. There's actually two, unfortunately. I'm, I don't think I'll survive this, but we'll see. We might be able to survive this battle. And as you can see, they have red shields on, so we're going to change this to yellow and this to blue, and we're basically going to attack them as, and then unpause the game to start the battle. And so here we go. Fire and fire as soon as uh, it actually charges. And we're going to try to deflect them. And now. All right. I think they actually hit me because it wasn't actually the color I, I thought it would be. This was yellow and blue. I totally mismatched this. Anyway, let's, let's do our thing. And so this is how the battles work in a nutshell. You see I'm missing a lot. Uh, but at the same time, I'm also hitting this guy because I was able to... Um, eliminate his uh, weapons, weapon systems. And so we're gonna try to destroy this guy before he destroys us. We're also evading them using uh, this button right here. And uh, essentially, this is not easy. This is actually kind of challenging, but at the same time, kind of fun. I'm actually really enjoying these battles. Uh, oh boy. Oh boy, we're not doing so well. Uh, there was, they're actually, I think they're trying to hail us, uh, or maybe not. Uh, okay, let's try to attack, attack, and evade. Alright, we evaded them very nicely. Uh, we still have deflector shields on. And there we go. Oh, come on, he's almost dead. Yay! This guy's dead. We only have one ship to deal with now. We'll be able to deflect his attacks easily and evade him. If we need to evade him, let's change our um, weapons. And here we go. So this is kind of fun, actually. Uh, it, it is challenging, though, especially if there's more than... more. Um, oh, he has no weapons left. Haha. <laughs> if there's more than two, it's actually super challenging. If there's one, it's usually not very difficult. Uh, but when you have several, um, several enemies attacking you, it's actually... it does get hard. Okay, let's see if we can hit him. Oh no, he changed it to yellow. Darn it! And as we're trying to destroy him, uh, we're basically going to go through the damage report as well. Uh, they've actually damaged us quite a lot. Our hull is now uh, down to 29%. And a lot of our um, crew members are also damaged, unfortunately. But uh, luckily, we'll be able to soon... One more shot. Come on, you can do it. And boom, right? Right? There we go. Excellent. We've destroyed the enemy. We've collected um, collected some items here. We also collected this, which we'll, we'll need to repair our ship. Okay, so none of these are very useful, but we do need to use this to repair our ship a little bit. Um, especially things like life support and also laser cannon. Uh, so we'll need to collect more of those um, from other planets and from other events. Uh, but basically, this is the battle in the national. You want to avoid battles because they're usually very resource... Um, uh, heavy and they will usually cause a lot of damage a lot of civilians will die um, 
I think they're still dying actually. And uh, also your crew members will suffer injuries, which is um, which can actually kill them. So this girl Jennifer is down to like 5% of her life. And so this is basically how this game works. This is how the battles work and how resource management and everything else works. Um, this game is not for everyone. And, and at $20, I, I think not everyone will actually purchase it, which is why it has such a low review score. Uh, but to me, this is actually kind of fun. I'm, I think I'm possibly going to do a playthrough of this at, at least a few times in the future. So do, uh, if you enjoy this game, do, do keep track um, of when I actually post this sometime next week, possibly. Um, and, but that's it for Into the Stars, and this is how the game works in a nutshell. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, and hopefully now you know what this game is all about. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to like this video and share it with your friends. Let's get inside this little donut and see what it looks like on the inside. And if you enjoy these kinds of reviews, check out some of the other space game reviews that I've posted um, previously. Alright, so let's go through this donut and see what it's all about. Um, there's always going to be more space game reviews coming, so uh, make sure to subscribe if you still haven't. Thank you guys for watching, thank you for all your support, and game you later. I think we're going to crash into this, I don't think I'll be able to avoid it. And bye-bye. I killed 74 civilians. On that note, have a good day. Subscribe, and see you later. Bye-bye.